when Kawhi Leonard and Paul George simultaneously landed with the Clippers in the summer of 2019, it was believed that we'd just seen the next great team come together. A team so great that it could potentially surpass the Lakers as the team in Los Angeles. That idea was always ridiculous, but that's not the point. Leonard was fresh off winning the 2019 title with the Toronto Raptors, earning his second Finals MVP at just 27 years old. There were people that believed he had taken the mantle as the best player in the NBA after that title run with Toronto, a spot that had been held by LeBron James for about a decade. George was fresh off the best season of his career, in one of the more underrated individual seasons of the last decade, as he finished top three in both MVP and Defensive Player of the Year voting with the Thunder. It was a duo that seemed destined for greatness, as the two were seen as arguably the two most complete players in the game at that point. But four full seasons later and a lot of injuries, the Clippers have only even made the conference finals once. The era as a whole has been disappointing, but even as recently as last season, people still had hope that they could win a title. Zach Lowe, a journalist that I like and respect, predicted them to make the NBA Finals before last season. The team has never lacked talent, and when healthy, have always been good enough. Due to the continuing disappointment though, the front office decided to go all in earlier this season trading for former MVP and last year's NBA assist leader James Harden. Many were skeptical of the deal, calling Harden a diva and a team killer. It didn't help when the team lost its first five games with him on the squad. But since that point, they've turned into a machine, winning 16 of their last 19 games, and Kawhi didn't play in two of the losses. They've been likely the best team in the entire NBA over that stretch and play a super fun brand of basketball. All the guys feel really unselfish, the ball is flying around, and they're winning just about everything. The craziest part might be the fact that Kawhi Leonard, a player many have accused of being a robot, is smiling all the time and clearly enjoying himself. They might have the most talented top 7 or 8 guys of any team out there, and they look almost unstoppable. This is what Steve Ballmer and the Clippers envisioned almost five years ago, and they finally look like the contenders they were built to be. Now let's take a deeper look. Before we get into the nearly unstoppable squad in LA, if you enjoy my content and watch a few videos of mine, think about subscribing. 96% of my viewers are actually not subscribed, so if you watch it before and enjoy the content, drop a sub and comment down below. It really helps the channel. If you're talking about the Clippers' recent success, you have to start with Kawhi Leonard, who is back to playing like one of the five or so best players in the league. He's been phenomenal. Since the start of the Clippers' scorching hot 19-game stretch on December 2nd, Kawhi has averaged 27 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2 steals per game, while shooting an absolutely unconscious 57% from the field, 48% from 3, and 93% from the free throw line. He's blowing the historic 50-40-90 mark out of the water and might be shooting for a 60-50-95 mark, which would be hands down the most efficient season in NBA history. He is completely unstoppable right now, and a large amount of the Clippers' success is thanks to how great he's been. I'd say he's probably been the best player in the entire league since the Clippers really got going, which is saying something for a 32-year-old coming off many serious injuries over the past few years. It feels almost impossible for him to be playing this well, which lends to the robot theory. Maybe he's a cyborg sent from the future to change the course of basketball history. Or you know, he's just better at hoops than pretty much anyone else ever. But the robot theory is more fun. The crazy thing though is that despite his numbers being arguably the best they've ever been, he has his lowest usage rate since the 2016 season. Yes, the lowest in 8 years. That's thanks to the addition of Harden, who is making Kawhi's life as easy as possible. The beard has fit onto this Clippers team about as smoothly as you could have expected, and just as he did last season with Embiid, he's setting up all-star teammates with easy looks. Not only is Kawhi's efficiency through the roof, but so is Paul George's, who's shooting 49% from the field and 46% from three since the December 2nd start point. The three-point percentages of these two stars is absurd, and a lot of that can be thanks to Harden, 
who's averaging 10 assists per game over the team's last 19. He is also contributing 19 points and 6 rebounds per game, while shooting a wild 44% from 3 himself. All three of the trio's three-point percentages over the span would be career highs for a season, which is just ludicrous. The amount of pressure they take off one another is crazy, and it's legit some of the most unselfish ball you'll ever see. They're only taking the highest quality of shots they would have taken in the past, because when your team has so much talent, you never have to settle on the shots that you take, which makes this team incredibly dangerous. There's just too many great players to guard. Norman Powell is also shooting 45% from three over this stretch. There's just genuinely nothing you can do defensively. An understated part of Harden's game is how much he helps the big men on his team. A lot of people were pointing fingers at Avicja Zubac early in the season and saying the team needed an upgrade. But over the team's last 19 games, Zu is averaging 13 points, 10 rebounds, and a block per game while shooting over 70% from the field. He's also a staggering plus 7 per game, which is incredibly high. He's just been a very solid, consistent presence, and is playing some of the best ball of his career, as is most of this Clippers team. I think they've really figured it out, and Ty Lue continues to prove he's one of the best coaches in the game today, but there's really not an obvious flaw with this team, and they finally look like the contender they were built to be. Thanks for watching. I'm Herm. Have a good one.